like Jay Brock. Cause I can score with a second on the clock. My mom taught me how to just like interact with other people. Like I don't know, I, I know how to interact with anybody. Mm -hmm. Whether they uncomfortable, comfortable, whether they black, white, Asian, it don't matter. You feel me? I can interact with them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make them feel super comfortable so we can do whatever we gotta do to get get it done. Mm -hmm. um, That's a skill, bro. That's a skill. Nah, for sure. I didn't yeah. realize that how mm -hmm. much of a skill that was until I got older. Okay. And I started noticing like, excuse me, we go to certain places and you know, everybody talk about, you know, I want to be myself everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. And I, when I say this, it's not you being somebody else. It's just putting yourself in certain situations. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, um, for instance, if I'm going to sign a $50 million deal right now, it don't matter if I'm the biggest pothead in the world. I could not smoke this weed right now, mm -hmm. so I can go up in this office smelling like Baccarat mm -hmm. instead of weed. Mm -hmm. So they'll be more comfortable with me when they handed me over this $50 million Gang. versus me telling everybody, we don't give a fuck, we're going to go up in there how we do it because we us, and now they looking at us different. Now mm -hmm. they think we a liability. or mm -hmm. And it, it's not even just us being black. It, 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 it could be anybody, you feel me? Mm -hmm. But one thing my mom always taught me too is like when people are giving you money, they're going to judge you. And you can't really, like, be mad at that. Mm. Like, they give you large lump sums of money, bro. They're supposed to judge you, you feel mm -hmm. me? Because if that was the case, nigga, they would just give large lump sums of money to, to anybody. Everybody, yeah. And they don't. They're mm -hmm. going to judge you. They got to know what their return on investment is, is like. They got to know that what they're investing in is safe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They got to know certain things. So uh, being able to, like, interact with different people, that shit came a long way, you feel mm. me? Um, yeah. And just like, you know, preventing me from being in certain situations and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but going back to what you were saying, my mom, she just instilled a lot of hustle in me, bro. Mm -hmm. Like my mom was, a, my mom got to it, you feel me? Yeah. No days off, yeah. taking care of the kids, doing her thing. Like she, she really worked hard, mm -hmm. you feel me? That's right. So I don't, for me, I look at it like if a, if a mom of two can hustle her ass off, well, I can't. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I should be able to go a hundred times harder than her. Yeah. So come on now, that makes sense. Like Pac say, we got our game from a woman. Yeah, come on, straight sure. like that. So we talked about this a little bit, but let's give it to him on the camera. Uh, do you feel like that you would have that you would have became a rapper had you not went through that moment of him hanging up on you and you having to understand, like you know what, it's time for me to do this. Do you feel like we would have West Side Web the rapper today? Nah. Okay. For sure, 100% nah, because I ain't want to rap. Mm -hmm. I was against it. So, probably, you know, I think like, we was talking about that earlier, you know, I be thinking about it all the time. Yeah. I, you know, I, I be having random moments where I think polyester, like, he super humble, so he just like, bro, I was just doing what I was supposed to do. But, mm -hmm. you know, I already be appreciating poly because I would have never rapped, bro. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be here. Nobody in the world would know any of my songs. Yeah. The songs that you was listening to this yeah. morning wouldn't exist. Yeah. I wouldn't have rapped, for yeah. sure. I would have kept making beats, because yeah. that's what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. that shit was a big part of my career, bro. Yeah. Like, not only did it like start the career, but that was a big part of everything as far as the rapping side, because mm -hmm. I ain't want to do that. Mm. That's crazy, because I feel like we all have that, that thing or that moment where we can say, if it wasn't for this, it wouldn't have never taken place. Yeah. But when you think about like the success that you've had at that, do you ever think to yourself like, what if I had started this way back then? Like, where would things be right now? Yeah, I think about but, that too. But I mean, too. but you're successful. You, you're very successful with it though. Yeah, I appreciate it. But I be thinking about that too. But um, I think it was all divine timing, bro. Because I started rap when I started rapping. I was a little bit older and a little bit more mature. You mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. So I think that. If I started rapping six, seven, eight years ago, the shit that I'm talking about, well, I wouldn't be talking about it. Because yeah. I had to go through life and experience certain things. So like this game that I'd be giving the fans and stuff, I don't think I would be giving them that game yet because I hadn't learned it at 22, 23 years old. You feel understood, me? Understood. So uh, I think everything that I'd be, I think like um, I would still be dope as an artist. Yeah. My voice has always been my voice. Yeah. Um, I think I'll always have like, my flows and my cadences that I have, but the message that I'm preaching would have been completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, honestly, nah, bro. I don't. I think if I had started rapping a long time ago, I kind of probably would have just fell in the same mm. 
wave as everybody else. Mm -hmm. But you so, could have evolved though, because you have a lot of artists who do evolve. Yeah, but you then know? you got times too where when you come out and people like something, when you switch it up, they stop liking it. Mm. You got a lot of people like that who tried to switch up and evolve or whatever. I'm not gonna say the word evolve because personally that's great, you feel mm -hmm. me? But evolve with their music and do, and then their fans don't like them no more because mm -hmm. they like this not what, this not what I heard from you. Like mm -hmm. this not what what I want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. You ever see that where somebody drops something and people be like, this what like, like like this was cool, but like I don't want to hear this from you. Like I want to hear this because mm -hmm. that's what they used to. Mm -hmm. So I think if like if I made like a big transition like in in, in that time frame, it would have just been bad, bro. Okay. I understand that. I, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and, and as an artist, you do you have that responsibility to make sure that you continue to feed the people. Yeah. People will fall off. People will stick on. But I never thought about it that way. So that yeah. actually that actually makes a lot of sense. So I mean, now, where do you do you feel like do you feel like like the way that the landscape of music is today? Um, how do you feel about what's going on with L.A. music? You know, it's, I hate getting asked this question. It's, it's like tricky. You know what I'm saying? No, um, you got to answer it. I mean... I'm going to answer it for sure. Because I feel like personally, I feel like for when we slept on, I just think we don't have all the representation. I think that's a big part of it. Um, I think that like... I think people in the L.A. music scene are so accustomed to like one thing. Yeah. And like, it's been like that for a long time. And when you look at LA rap in general, most of it is, most of it either gotta do with violence or it gotta deal with bitches shaking ass. Yeah. Excuse me to the ladies, the women shaking ass, you mm -hmm. feel me? Um, which that's cool, that's our culture, bro. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, from, we from out here, bro. It's gang banging and violence and there's sexy women who do wanna do fly shit, you yeah. feel me? which is dope, yeah. but like, that's all you see. Mm -hmm. And that's all people get behind. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's a bunch of artists out here who are dope as fuck that's doing other things and people don't get behind them. Mm -hmm. When I look at a lot of the DJs, and this is no offense to nobody, you feel me? But when I look at a lot of DJs, blog sites, just people in LA who are in media, who could like really put other people from LA on, they don't do that. Yeah. They don't mm -hmm. do it at all, bro. Mm -hmm. Like. But you got they'll go, they'll go to the Roddies and the YGs and the Ty Dollar Signs, this, that, and the third. And those are like LA legends where we from. Like, I got the utmost respect for them. But it's like, you'll see people talking and complaining about LA music and certain things, but y'all are still pushing people who are already here. Mm. Like, y'all got to push the people who are here. Like, YG don't need a push. And that's no offense to YG. I fuck with Jizzle. But yeah, like, bro, YG is a household name. Like, yeah. he tours the world. Yeah. He don't need a cosign from an LA DJ. That's not going to do nothing for him. Mm -hmm. It be the people that you don't hear about who need that from that LA DJ or need that blog site or that media representative to come over and be like, hey, I want to, like, push you to the next level. I want to do something that's going to shine some light on you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we're missing at. When you look at every other region, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so many new artists that's coming out from other places and they booming. Because they cities and the entertainment, like, the, excuse me, the media people, and every, they getting behind them, they pushing them. Mm -hmm. You don't see people like, we'll take Atlanta for instance. You don't see media shit pushing Migos. Well, for what? Yeah. Migos is here already, bro. Mm -hmm. They don't need a push. They not pushing little Baby. Like, obviously, they're going to talk about him because he's somebody important and from their city. But, mm -hmm. like, he don't need that push, bro. It'll be them people that you don't hear about. Mm -hmm. Like... Like, I, I be hearing a lot of people listen to this dude. I don't know him, though. His name like, Huncho. I think he's from Atlanta, though. But, like, think looking like they're, like, the media, everything, they're getting behind him. He's somebody new. They're blowing him out the water. You feel mm -hmm. me? And then when that, when he gets here, then they're going to come with somebody else. And yeah. mm -hmm. we don't do that out here, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's so many dope artists, bro. Like, so many dope artists. Even producers, bro. When it comes to, like, producers. I know niggas in L.A. who make half the shit you hear on the radio. You don't see the people in the lake talking about them, though. They mm -hmm. talk about the producers that you see all the time on social media mm -hmm. or who did so-and-so's mixtape, you feel me? Mm -hmm. But there's people out here in L.A. that produce to have fucking Grammys, bro, and yeah. Diamond Records, and yeah. nobody talks about that, yeah. you feel me? Yeah. I just think we, like, come from a place of, like, they don't support people in L.A. until you make it. That's a fact. Once you make it, then it was, I've been fucking with you since day one and this, that, and the third, da-da-da-da, but that's really what it is. Yeah, that's you a fact. And see, 
It's both sides, though, because you got artists who don't want to mess with the media platforms for whatever reason that they have. Yeah. So I think that it's just something that L.A. has to come together with and for to make it make sense. Now, I get it. You might not. We might not want to mess with these media platforms. They don't have the content. They don't have a whatever it is. Yeah. And um, see me like I started my situation on the phone, bro. Like I interviewed Cypress. On my I phone. I remember. Bro. That's how I met you. On, on you my had phone, that shit bro. All on your phone. Bro, everything was on the phone. But when you look at the growth now, shout out to BCW Productions, Sneaks, and Ellie. They are, they are, they have helped, and we have grown so much together. So, um, when you think about that, how, what are you looking at when somebody approaches you? How do you expect somebody to come, come at you about an interview? Hey, what's up? I want to interview you because Eastside K Boy touched on this. Like, you can't just jump in my DMs and just come at me a certain way. You got to come and be professional. Yeah. So, what is the way that somebody that you would refer, prefer somebody? to approach you about the, things like this. Hit Diddy. Hmm. Hit Diddy straight up. Hit Diddy. Yeah. Because Diddy going, that's 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 what he here for, you mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. Diddy going to relay everything back. I'm bad with my phone, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. horrible with my phone. Like, yeah. I respond, I'm the nigga that responds back two business days later. You feel me? <laughs> business days. So, like, days. don't hit me. Like, yeah. hit Diddy. Like, yeah. my phone stay on do not disturb, you feel mm -hmm. me? But it's certain people who can get past that. And yeah. Didi's one of them. So yeah. it's like, hit Didi. Yeah. Didi gonna hit me and I'm gonna answer. You feel mm -hmm. me? Um, but other than that, bro, I don't really be tripping. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I look at everything, just I'll be appreciative of it. Because mm -hmm. I'm still new to this. Like, I only yeah. been rapping two years. So it's like, that's crazy. Every, everything to me that comes with this, I still just be grateful and just mm -hmm. be taking it in. So, you know, if somebody want to do an interview, like, I'm open to it as long as it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, don't. I don't want to do no interviews that's going to make me crash out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do no interviews or nothing that's going to make me look like anything that I'm not. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Also, I don't want to do no shit that, like, I've done before. You feel mm -hmm. me? I don't want to go to interviews and they asking me the same questions that we seen on the last shit. So, mm -hmm. But other than that, bro, I be cool. Like, I, I, I be excited to do shit. Mm -hmm. I'm a very closed off person, bro. I don't, nobody really know too much about me unless you're around me. Yeah. So, um... You know, it's like a way to give people insight of like me in mm -hmm. my life. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't, I don't be opposed to it at all. I feel that. I feel that. See, a person of your stature, you could though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and you go through. Like, let me ask you something. How many of the people that you've like looked up to in this industry, when you finally got to meet them, it was like, like, ah, uh, man, like this was this was just kind of <laughs> like was it didn't it didn't it didn't feel good meeting you. So a have lot. you went through that? Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people that I that I've seen on my screen. And then when I meet them in person, they something like totally different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, I don't pay attention to it though. I yeah. think that's what comes with the industry that we in. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fake shit. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't let it affect me. Mm -hmm. I just take a mental note and just know like, oh, okay, like dude not really like this or mm -hmm. he act a certain way or he got a bad attitude or you just, I learned a long time ago like, you got to just place people in certain categories, bro. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then it, it's like it's like a drawer that you putting clothes in like you don't just stuff all your underwears in one drawer like you got your drawers in a drawer, you got your socks in a drawer, you got your t-shirts, your pants and it's like you able to pull open that drawer whenever you need that. Mm -hmm. So with certain people that I meet, it's like I ain't going to say I don't fuck with you, it's just you might be good for something and bad for everything else. Mm. But when I need that something that you good for, I'm gonna tap in with you. Mm. you feel me? Mm. That's a bar. I feel that learning how to learning how to separate the relationships yeah. because like you said, everybody plays a part. Yeah. So like what's up where it's incredible um talking to you and we gotta take it back, man. We gotta talk about this '96 Intrepid that you've made some references to, <laughs> because we didn't all had our own first car, right? Yeah. So take us back to them days in that '96 Intrepid. What color was it? Was you having trouble turning the car on sometimes? I mean, what, what was those days <laughs> like, man? Man, 2011, 12, one of them years, I got my first car. Yeah. Out of 1996 Dodge Intrepid. Yeah. That motherfucker was burgundy. Yeah. You know, this was like 2011, so yeah. first thing I did, got my car, I went right down the street, got some tent, yeah. put some beat in my yeah, shit. Yeah, on top, you got to get you the beat. You know what I'm saying? Come put on, some man. beat in the car. <laughs> it was older, too, so I ended up buying like one of them little screens, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, I felt like I was the nigga. Yeah. 
You know, when you were like, when you were in high school still, you got a car, bro. You, you like, you, 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 the, you the nigga. I don't yeah. give a fuck what car you got. Like, yeah. bro, I don't have to get on the bus no more. I don't yeah. have to walk. Like, I'm sliding through. I'm thinking I'm the nigga. I'm pulling up to school, beating this shit. Yeah. You feel me? I'm watching people getting <laughs> off the bus. I'm, I'm beating up. You feel yeah. me? Pulling up to school, like, yeah, yeah you feel me? So, yeah. yeah, I thought I was a nigga. But I always used to, like, always have big dreams, bro. And I always, like, envision shit. I think manifestation is something that's very important, not only with your words, but with your thoughts, too. Yeah. Um, so you, it, it would be times, like, I've always wanted a Benz. I always wanted an S-Class. Like, and there was times where I used to be driving my trapping and shit, like, up and down Long Beach Boulevard mm. and be like, man, one day I'm going to be doing this, but it's going to be S-Class, you feel me? Like, I would really, like, have my hand on the steering wheel and be seeing the, the Dodge sy yeah. symbol and, like, rerouting my mind to make it a, a, a Mercedes-Benz yeah. emblem, you mm -hmm. feel me? Um, so, yeah, you know, that was back in the day. I loved my Intrepid, though. Yeah. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was you listening to back then in that Intrepid, man? Um, that was, like, 2011. I ain't gonna lie, I was probably listening to anything I was getting put on that pit for live mixtapes, bro. Okay. That yeah. was, like, back in them days, so. Yeah. I used to listen to, like, a lot of Wiz. A lot of Nip, a lot of um, this going crazy too. A lot of uh, like Rick Ross, a lot of Meek Mill, yeah. um, just really all the shit that was a lot of Gucci Mane, all the shit that was on live mixtapes and, and that piff, bro. Yeah. Cause you know this was before streaming, so that was like yes. where you wanted to go get new music from. Like, that's where you gonna go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, back then I was listening to a lot of that shit. Um, man, man, shout out to the Intrepid days. It's funny that you said you used to pull up to the school. I called myself, when I first got my car, I called myself. I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm going to get on the bus again so I can save gas. And she laughed at me. She said, that ain't going to last. I got on the bus that one day and said, I'm never, never doing, doing this. Again. Never again, bro. Like, what? About, you know, and then when you have a car at that age, it's like everything goes up. The, yeah. the girls, the, the fun. Where can't you go now? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I could do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. girls, you got to think about it. Back when you were in 11th grade, girls... Unless they daddy was just had some paper, like they don't have a car neither. That's a fact. And most of the niggas that they dealing with, unless they dealing with an older dude, he ain't got no car neither. So you yeah. already like ahead of the curve. Yeah. So you talking to her, this back <laughs> in the day, you might be messaging her on like MySpace or yeah. Facebook or something. Aim. No, that wasn't AIM. Yeah, no, that was still AIM days too. Like, okay, okay. But yeah. it's like, you know, you hit the, sh we used to like, and that's another thing too, in today's era, everybody's bougie. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And the younger generation, they was, like, able to be bougie. Mm -hmm. I be telling my little homies this, like, like, bro, y'all able to call one of the homies and get an Uber. Yeah. Like, we ain't had that comfortability, bro. It was no like, action. you're on the bus. You're yeah. on the train. You, like, to get from point A to point B, you got to do shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you take it back to those times, you dealing with a female, she like, this nigga got a car. He come pick me up. Like, yeah. I don't got to get on the bus to, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't got to get on the train to go pull up. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Come holla at me. You Man, and that's when that good $5, <laughs> you shoot me $5, I can take you somewhere. That's when that it That shit work. work, yeah. yeah, that, yeah that, that nigga throw five on the gas tank, yeah. you got 10 You got ten on the petrol, that yeah. shit is real. Cause yeah. yeah, gas then wasn't as high as it is now. And Man. plus on top of that, we wasn't really like traveling too far. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You gonna, you gonna stay where you know. So for me, like $20 to give me all around Long Beach. And yeah, you'll be straight. Yeah, I'll be super straight. Yeah, so let's talk about baseball too. As a former athlete, I went through a period of time where when the game was over for me, I was lost. Yeah. I, 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 maybe I was depressed for a little while, uh, and I tried different things in order to find where I could put that same energy into. So after baseball was over, where would you play shortstop, Long Beach Millican? Yeah. Okay, yeah. got you. So you played shortstop up there. When the game was over for you, did you go through a period of time of finding your identity or feeling kind of like, damn, I wish I could play again? Um, really both. Yeah. I love baseball. i am still be thinking to today I wish I could play. Mm -hmm. I get I get big enough with this rap shit. I'm going to try out for somebody's team. You gonna you gonna own a team. What? I'm gonna <laughs> own it and still wanna play yeah, for yeah, it. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. Cause I really love baseball like that. Yeah. So what was the type of feeling that you got out there on the baseball field? If you can take us through the emotion, you know what I'm saying? Like the passion that you was able to give out. What what, what was that for you? Um uh, I think it was just something like I love to do, bro. When you love something, you're gonna have a natural passion for it. Like mm -hmm. everything about it is gonna excite you, you feel mm -hmm. me? So with baseball, that's how it was for me. I've been playing this since I was young, so it was I loved everything about baseball, but I'm mm -hmm. a full boy. Like mm -hmm. I don't have no other bones in my body other than like being a boy, you feel yeah. me? So I like sweating, bro. I like getting <laughs> dirty. I was the kid yeah. like if like if we played the game. 
And by the time when game was over, if my uniform wasn't dirty, like I'm going to slide in the dirt just because, like, just because, because yeah. I need my uniform dirty. You yeah, feel me? Funny. So it was like everything about baseball I loved, bro. Um, yeah. I loved every like I can't even really explain it, bro. It's just everything about it. Like I love, bro. I love the smell of the grass freshly cut. Mm. Like I love the fucking dirt in the in the infield, bro. How mm-hmm. it's freshly just laid. You feel me? And mm-hmm. just everything about it, bro. It was yeah. just everything. Everything about it was amazing to me. Yeah. Um, but like afterwards, I wasn't really sad. I was lost because I had already like kind of started making beats. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it was kind of just like, like, fuck it. Now I got more time to like make beats, you mm-hmm. feel me? Like, I've always played baseball since I was young, so that taught me a lot of discipline too because I have to go to baseball practice in the morning, That's then right. I have to go to school, then I have to go to baseball practice afterwards, then mm-hmm. I might be playing for another league, so after that, I'm, like, my whole life was literally consumed around baseball, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So once I stopped playing baseball, like, yeah. I think the only thing that confused me was just like I had all of this free time and it was just like like figuring out what to do with it now. You feel mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I never really got like confused or like was lost. I just looked at it as like shit. This, this my calling to do music. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a blessing, man. Shout out to that um, because so many so many people go through that and um, it, it's amazing to see that you were able to to go ahead and continue the music and be so successful, which started, and I wanted to talk about something. So you talked about going in the dirt and sliding just to get your, I remember one time it was, a, it was, a, it was, a, I, was I played football. It was like a pile up tackle, right? The whistle blown. I'm the only nigga standing there. I just jumped into the, it jumped into it just, just because. because I'm like, I need to be a part of this. Right. So, you know, as kids, we go through that, but shout out because your love for music started a while ago. You know what I'm saying? I think you said two years old at your godmom's house. You also played, uh, uh, what, the violin, the cello. Yeah, I played the violin, and, the cello, and the yeah, trumpet. Yeah, all those yeah. things. I also played the trumpet in middle school. I wanted to play the drums, but I ended up playing the trumpet. Um, one of the things I used to do as a kid was I used to create my own drum sets. Go to my grandparents' house, get the tops, the cookie thing, all kind of stuff. So um, when you're doing that, bro, at, at, at a young age, how often does that play in your mind, knowing that that played a part in your passion and love for music? Uh, I just... When I look back at it, I, I I think like music was destined for me. Yeah. I think that like everything else I was doing was like something that taught me a lesson in life. Mm-hmm. But I honestly think music was destined for me. You know, I, my mama just told me about this shit recently. Like, and she and your godma called you maestro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, godma called me maestro just off the dribble. She yeah. still called me it to this day. Okay. Um, I didn't even know like why or what like she was doing, but she knew what she was doing. Yeah. But um. You know, I, I always used to get in trouble at school for making beats. Like, yeah. I was the nigga at school, like, banging on the desk, on the handball court, with my pencil, like, making beats on the desk. I would always get in trouble for that. Mm-hmm. And, like, this was before I even started making beats or nothing, you feel me? Um, so I think just everything that I was doing, like, when I was younger, like, essentially, like, it came to me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, even when I was young and I, le- I used to listen to music, I wouldn't just try to memorize the words and just be like, oh, this song's tight, you feel me? Like, I'm gonna rap this. I used to try to literally, like, do the words the exact way the rapper was doing, like, in the same pocket, on the same tempo, same key, like, everything, like, like just... Perfectionist. Yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm. So, I think even that, like, I was thinking about this the other day, I think that's why I'm able to, like, when I rap now, why I'm able to hit certain pockets and certain shit, because, like, I wasn't realizing it, but when I was young, I was I was practicing. You feel mm-hmm, me? Mm-hmm. Um, straight up, straight yeah. up. Now I I feel that now. We got to get up out of here in a minute, but I want to finish with just talking a little bit about uh, uh, Player Games Three. Uh, wonderful project, <laughs> no you. skips, bro. Thank you. How long did it take you to 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 put this all together, Player Games Three? I started working on Player Games Three right after I dropped Sound Like It Looks, mm-hmm. so around like July, August. Okay. Uh, how many different versions could we have gotten to Player Games 3? Two. Two different versions, okay. Yeah, so right after Sound Like It Look, um, Player Games 3, when I started working on it, I, I, was, I was going through some shit in my life, bro, and I, I ended up doing all the, I did the whole Player Games 3. And when I listened back to it, I wasn't speaking from a place of, like, motivation or a place of, like, like I wasn't thinking about the fans, bro. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about myself. I was just, like, rapping about whatever I was going through. When I sat down and like really listened to it, I was like, 
this shit cool, like it's tight, don't get me wrong, but it's not Player Games 3. Mm -hmm. So I had to like go really revise the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, every song, bro, mm -hmm. all the beats, I had to change everything. Um, so yeah, that was a process in itself. Y'all yeah. definitely could have got a whole different version of, yeah. even some of the songs you hear now, like I have them same songs on other beats mm -hmm. and they sound completely different. You feel that's me? That's crazy, yeah, that's crazy, man. But shout out to Player Games 3. Man, when I instantly start listening to that, I skip a lot of songs, but this right here is easy to just listen all the way straight through. The vibe is there. It's a beautiful project. So y'all, clap it up, make some noise. We got my boy Westside Web up in here. Make sure y'all bang that Player Games 3. Man, it was a pleasure chopping game with you, Westside Web. Appreciate, Appreciate you for you, bringing me up here. Yes, man. sir. Appreciate yes, sir. That.